Chapter 5 The Vacuum of Joy Isaiah 42nd chapter 5th through the 11th verse says, Thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you to righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to spring out prisoners from the prisons, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, my name and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carve away images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. Galatians 5th chapter 22nd to 23rd verse reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, against which there is no law. Proverbs 17 and 22 says, A cheerful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. As a child, we equate childhood filled with joy and laughter. The family structure is created to bring joy and peace to its members while protecting and providing for everyone. This is typically assigned to the father or male person in the family due to societal normality. Each person in the family has a role and position to play to keep the nuclear family relevant and functioning correctly. In society, a male is considered the family leader who provides, protects, and displays strength for his family. The mother is the joy will of the family. There is a saying, if mom is happy, the whole house is happy. These are the balances of love and joy. The definition of joy is the emotion evoked by well-being, success, good fortune, or the prospect of possessing what one's desires. Does that mean we have lost our well-being when we lose our joy or good fortune? According to the definition of joy, this is true. Consequently, for the family and its structure to bring joy and well-being to everyone. Therefore, we must fight to maintain it by every means necessary. It is crucial to make a real effort to fill the lives of each family member with hope, joy, and peace when they are together. Today, the family structure of a male and female as parents with children is subjective and archaic by modern definition. However, this structure was ordained by divine anticipation for procreation, nurturing the offspring to learn and establish identity and assurance. Joy as a family is challenging work. Regardless of how you subscribe to having or being a family, there must be balance and blessings. Just like Abraham in the Old Testament scriptures and his willingness to trust and believe in a monotheistic God called Yahweh. <laughs> Professor Israel Cole says that the original name of Yahweh is known in Arabic that God reveals his name to Moses as I am from the Hebrew root being. The name Yahweh, however, originates in Median and derives from Arabic term for love, desire, or passion. Also, the Hebrew definition of God's name, Yahweh, was translated as tetragrammaton, Greek for four letters. This definition of God's name is conclusive 
to the teaching in the Bible as it reveals to us God's reasoning for creating mankind and choosing to reveal himself to Abram during the time when people were serving multiple gods and deities. Abram was told to leave his country and trust God, Yahweh, for his life and future. This is the same thing that Yahweh is asking us to do today. Primarily, it is being done differently because he has provided his son Jesus as atonement and advocate for our rebellion to be reconciled and recommitted to him. The translated name for God is love, desire, and passion, which becomes a great foundation for humans who desire to be closer to God and walk according to his statutes. The love, desire, and passion of God is written throughout the Bible in its stories and verses as it reveals the love and mystery of God regarding how much he loves us. We are considered his children. He loves us and desires to have a relationship with us. God is passionate about his love for his children and wants to have a relationship. In the Bible, God is recorded as speaking to a person named Jeremiah while he was praying for the Israelites after they were put into captivity. Jeremiah recorded what God said to him. He said, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness, I have drawn you. That's found in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, in the third verse. God is love, and his love is everlasting once you start a relationship with him. He wants to show you how to love your families, desire the best for them, and exhibit a passion for their life and well-being. This is the correct order of a parent with their children. To love them have passion for their future and speak into their lives that they are important and matter. However, what happens when the communication is broken? The desire to nurture is not there or the passion for keeping you safe has vanished. What happens to the relationship of the family? Joy turns into sadness and hope becomes hopeless. Just like the children of Israel, when the presence of God stopped loving them and directing them, they fell into depravity and pain. They began to serve other gods, which were demonic influences, to kill, steal, and destroy the relationship with Yahweh permanently. Our families are designed with the same structure in mind. Our parents are supposed to love and protect us, When something happens and the parent no longer protects us and becomes the predator or absent, we become vulnerable to demonic influences or searching for love and peace in the wrong places. When joy and peace are missing in our lives, we alleviate those things with unrealistic notions of happiness and joy while living and serving idols and false gods. Our ability to know right from wrong becomes blurred, and we are persuaded by demonic influences to rebel against the original order of our parents and lifestyles. The vacuum effect of not having joy in our lives as ordained by God, creates a fake joy that allows us to settle for the appearances of joy and peace because the original version of peace and love was non-existent in our lives. The vacuum is filled with people talking and grooming you into thinking that they are on your side and they love you when the entire time they are like the serpent and Eve, 
when he presented false hope and desires to her as becoming like God. God is the entity that can guarantee peace and joy. The scriptures are filled with examples of God's divine providence in matters of life and purpose. Reading through the stories gives us hope and a detailed picture of God's love and desire to have mercy and grace on us all. One of the passages in the Bible tells us that God seeks repentance and reverence from his people. This is outlined in the second book of Chronicles, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse, as Ezra records the time of King Solomon's reign and how God was angry at the chosen people because they began to worship idols and sacrifice children to pagan gods in the temple that God instructed David to build. Just as God required Israel to refrain from sin and impurities of the body, mind, and spirit, God's dwelling place should be kept clean of impurities and covert or overt idol worship. Our true joy is connected with being in a relationship with God. It is important to know that the joys we believe are real in our lives do not compare to the joy of knowing God. We search for joy in many ways. Most of the time, our joy becomes depleted into a form of happiness, meaning, can you remember a time when we're asked, are you happy? Or what are your greatest pleasures by man's standards? Being happy and enjoying the pleasures of life equates joy. However, joy is different and comes with more relations. We can temporarily be happy with our circumstances just as we can experience pleasures in those times. But can we honestly say we have joy? Joy is spiritual and joy is internally satisfying to the point that it makes you glow, shine, and beam with an essence that comes from the heart and soul of a person. It's real, true emotion that a person sees with their eyes, their mannerisms, and their voice. A passion in the Bible tells us, the lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. Happiness and pleasure are based on the five senses that we use in our bodies. Our sight and touch allows us to see and touch the things around us, which spark emotions within us and tells our brains that it is good. And we are experiencing pleasure from it. Our eyes tell us that a person we first saw looks good on the outside and there will be pleasure in knowing that person. Our eyes begin to instruct our mind and heart to store that visual in our minds for later date. Additionally, the capture sight of that person starts to resonate in our minds and our minds begin to give that stored picture precedence over other things such as logic and practicality. Later, our thoughts of that person become preconceived notions of only the exterior and the probability of the personality that they may have. The notion of that person's heart is played out in our minds to be joyful, playful, calming, warm, and faithful. We begin to trust what our eyes are showing us from a superficial advantage to believe that we are that person's desire. Then we welcome their response and attention. Our minds tell us that we will be happy with the exterior mannerism of a person and it builds a pseudo joy perspective of joy. The word pseudo means false, fake, or not genuine. When we allow our minds to overrule our hearts and soul, often we will experience hurt, pain, or disappointment. And our minds 
start to trick us into believing that we will find real joy when we start a physical relationship with a person without knowing who they are emotionally or spiritually. The outer parts of that person may be superficially pleasing to the eyes. Still, when we build a more internal relationship with that person, we find this person to have experienced trauma and disorders that attribute to a vacuum effect in their past. If this person is a female or persons of a female persuasion, this shows characteristics of a person searching and looking for validation of who they are and whether they are safe to explore and experience life in a secure and informal manner. This validation comes from the parents. Consequently, developmental strengths are weakened when a person does not experience that validation from the parents. These strengths are developed when there is no vacuum effect in the developmental and attachment phase of the child's development. Unfortunately, the loss of a parent in the household causes developmental delays. As adults, we are able to differentiate between what is real joy and what is pseudo-joy. Gary Collins states, All human beings, especially children, need to feel close bonds with other human beings. This is the core of what has become known as attachment theory. For example, when children are separated from their parents, there is an anxiety of often emotional aloofness. If one parent remains or the, or the departed parent returns, the child clings to the father or mother, apparently afraid that separation will occur again. As a result, when the child becomes an adult, and is looking for validation and affirmation, they will emotionally attach themselves to a person to fill the physical void of a long-time missing parent. Life is intricate, and early development for us is so important. Experiencing joy is a blessing from God, and He wants our relationships to be fruitful and fulfilling so that we can grow to pursue our purpose and legacy in him. Although the Bible tells us that we are born into the world and will encounter troubles and tests, it is important that we seek to grow and find joy from an internal and spiritual perspective. A person's exterior has flaws and pseudo-gratification that help us see and feel secure and safe at that moment. But that is a deception that keeps us away from discovering who we are as individual. Joy looks good on the face and body. Joy tells the outside world that you have peace and happiness in your heart. Joy comes from God because he wants us to be joyful and make a joyful exaltation towards him. There is a proverb that tells us a person finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good is a timely word. That's found in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, 23rd verse. After the storm and struggle passes in our lives and we can find real joy in our lives, we can give a reply of joy that is timely for others who will still be in their emotional and mental struggle. We are the lighthouses of joy when we overcome our history of pain and insecurity. Our childhood or traumas do not and must not define who we are. We must strive to be a lighthouse and beacon in which a person can find joy after the storms. 
renewing our minds and allowing ourselves to step out of the vacuum and embrace an anchor of faith, hope, and love is vital to becoming planted and rooted in peace. Furthermore, it is a process. There will be additional storms and struggles that will arise, but if you are truthful to yourself and face your demons and fears with the determined hope that you can and will overcome your past and present, then you will begin to take care of the superficial you by eating right, maintaining good health, and being proud of who you are. God never makes a mistake. Creating you was not a mistake or an error. It was very good. When faced with dealing with a physical or natural loss of a parent or loved one, we should remember the good times and the life lessons we shared with that person. Everyone experiences grief differently. And when we are faced with embracing the loss and trying to find a stream of joy in remembering that person, it may become an anchor to dealing with the loss or absence. Finally, the vacuum of joy can leave a person feeling lost and void of life. It is critical to identify why the joy is missing or what precipitated the absence and then find a way to replenish that emotion with another facet of joy that replaces the emptiness and deficit of laughter, faith, and joy. Suppose the loss of a loved one is more emotional than physical, meaning that person contributed to your trauma and abuse. In that case, there is still an option to forgive and release the pain and suffering that that person inflicted. It would not be heard, and it may take years to find a path of joy again, but it is imperative not to give up on joy and peace because of the pain and suffering you experience. You would make mistakes in love, and you would choose people that would exploit your desire to find joy and love. But it is essential to try to look at what man meant for bad. You can turn it around for good. This helps many find reasons to wake up and pursue life with a purpose and promise.